Is this like a serious thing or like comedy or like? Serious. Serious. Real serious. Unless, unless you're funny. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm not trying to make these humorous, but sometimes they are. Depends on your personality. Okay. What is this like a... Give me an example. It's like people, you're not familiar with my channel. It's, it's kind of like, like people very seldom get to learn about people from these walks of lives. Like mm. whether, whether you're a prostitute or a gang member or a drug addict or a... So you want me to go raw? You can go as raw as you like. Okay. The more raw, the better. You what's, can swear. You can say anything you like. What's the purpose? Just to help, help us understand and learn. Okay. Yeah, I think if we all understand each other and how we got to where we are, I think we'll all do better in life. Who had this idea? I did. <laughs> That's dope. All right, Jesse. All right, let's do this. All right, Jesse. Uh, where are you from? Where did you grow up? Oh, so I grew up my first seven years in Oregon elementary school. Mm -hmm. And then I was transferred to Mexico. And then I grew up in like a little town where like cornfields and stuff grow. So when you say transferred to Mexico. Yeah. What does transferred mean? Like I was taken there when I was too young. By your parents or? Yeah, I was like, I was like, it's something that it shouldn't even be legal, you know? Like, you know, there's no way you can take a foster child to another country. Were you in the foster system? Yeah. What, where, what, what was going on with your f parents that you ended up in the foster system? My mom had like a, she had like a met lab, so she was just trying to find a way, you know, like all of us. So she got caught through a pizza delivery. Oh, wow. So she used to throw, like, the trash on another neighborhood. And, you know, they use, like, this type of stuff for the labs and stuff, like medicines and stuff. So your mom did some prison time? Yes, she did, and, and I got lost a little bit. Where was Dad? Oregon. I remember when I was in foster care, they had channels about Bigfoot and stuff. <laughs> That's all I remember. Bigfoot, Bigfoot, there was a, Bigfoot lives up in Oregon, I think. Yeah, it does. <laughs> and they used to talk a lot about that. It was like 2004 or something like that. There's also talk. Bigfoot in West Virginia, I've learned, and there's probably big feet in other It was just a weird thing. I remember a big dog in the backyard also. He was like a Rottweiler. But I have like little memories about that. It was like I was like in pause that part of my life, mm. just like waiting. How was the foster system in Mexico to you as a, as a young girl? That's the thing. I've I've never been in foster care in Mexico. I was I was directly taken to my family to my, your family, my dad family. So I don't know how that worked, yeah. but they ended up having my custody. But my dad had a family already, so he was like, you know what, I'm a, I'm a, my sister's gonna take care of you. His sister, his sister was a teacher. Oh, really? So they didn't want me to lose a year, so they want me to like learn Spanish real quick, how to write and read and everything in Spanish. And I did, she was good, so I did. And, but I remember like moments of frustration, of, ah, trying to like understand everything at the same time. Cause she used to make me put like a whole book of like the same word, the same word, the same word, like, oh. So yeah, it was a really hard part, but I got it and I didn't lose a year. So I learned how to talk in, That's good. in Spanish. You were a good student? I was a good student, but I got really tired. I th I think I've never been in my life more like, I hope this part of my life ends soon. Like just going to school, waking up every day, summer, uh, winter, all that stuff. You were bored? I didn't like school, I hated it. I did it to ha have my mom happy, but I really never saw like 
nothing like good on it because I believe like we can reach our own like beliefs and like learn our own ways because your body's gonna like attract you to certain things because that's destiny. Yeah, school can be very conforming. Yes, and you know what? It's also distracting and it takes your time for nothing. But it can also... We could have started learning what we really cared from then than having to learn how to unlearn the bullshit. But, but school rounds you out as a, as a human being and it also can build self-esteem. There's some benefits to school. It's too. like a socializing thing that more too. than anything. Mm -hmm. Like biolinguistica and stuff like that. But what is your first language? My first language was English, but for some reason I feel more comfortable with Spanish now. Hmm. Yeah, because I talk more Spanish my life than English. So it kind of makes sense. You graduated high school? I graduated high school. I have a little career, business and financials, like secretary type of stuff. Mm -hmm. How old are you? So whenever I feel like, fuck everything, I'm just going to end up in an office. <laughs> Maybe. You or if not, you might be my dreams are going to come true. <laughs> what are your dreams? I want to make music. I want to be an artist in all the expressions, if it's possible. Are you a singer? Or are you a... I'm a singer. Singer. Si quieres que te cante poquito. What do you like to sing? Mm, I like R&B. That's my style, kind of. Are you talented? I like to write more in Spanish. I'm talented. That's what people say. You might find out one day. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. I used to look on the internet and, and search my name in a Google search, and I would find so much information that was just <laughs> it was horrifying. You'd see my address. You'd see phone numbers. You'd see my relatives. You'd see all my health information, all kinds of stuff. It's like, I don't want that information out there. Data brokers sell your information to scammers, spammers, and anyone else who may want to target you. And that's why I signed up for Aura, the sponsor of today's video. Aura shows you which data brokers are selling your information and automatically submits opt-out requests for you. Cleaning up my information not only reduces the amount of spam I get, but it protects me from the hackers who could use this information to help them access my social media accounts, bank accounts, and other sensitive information. It's really easy to set up, so I don't have to download several different apps to get things like antivirus, VPN, password management, parental controls, identity theft, insurance, and more. I get everything at one affordable price. You may already have one or two of these tools already, but not having Aura is like locking your front door and leaving your back door wide open. I'm too busy to deal with this stuff, and I, that's why I appreciate that Aura is always on, keeping me safe so I don't have to worry about this kind of stuff. I value my privacy, and if you value yours, you can go to aura.com forward slash soft white underbelly to start your two week free trial. The link is in the video description box below. Now back to the video. Thanks. How old are you? I'm 26 so far. So far you're 26. And this Four is- Four steps and, for the third floor. And, this, and doing this kind of work is just something you're doing in the meantime? This is the type of job that has made me feel happier in my life. Really? You enjoy it? I enjoy it. I love it. I cry through my dance. Like, I feel like it leaves my body, you know? All the negativity leaves through my arms and feet and everything, my legs. When I move, I just feel it coming out of me. So I never knew that was a kind of therapy until I started doing it. What, what kind of emotions do you feel when you're dancing in the club? I feel mostly passion. I feel like a passion that is like incandescente, like that it doesn't burn out, you know? Mm. How, how do you see the men that are in the audience watching you? Are, are they just a bunch of horny men or are they there's, appreciate? There's they... more than two type of men. What kind of men are there in the dance, in the strip club? Um, a lot of them are running from financial problems with their wives, but at the, at the same time, they end up fucking up because they go spend their money there. 
but they just want to like talk to somebody about it. I have people that don't want to touch me or don't want me to be on their lap or something. They just want to talk about, sometimes they want to reflect their problems on you or the things they wish they could tell their wife without having a response back, you know? Like those type of things. Then there's the guys that go there to see the art. Like they really like to see the pole work. Like they like that. There's other guys that be like, you know what? I had a bad day. I just want to go there and see some titties, you know? It could be like a lot of things. It could be the girls that are trying to be surfer one day and they go with their friends. Or like this couple, they're going through their kinky part of life, but they always end up fighting. And yeah, it's always like the same prototypes. You get all kinds of people in the, in the club, right? Yeah, all kinds it's of It's not people. just horny old men. Yeah. Yeah, people wanting to smell your feet and, and stuff like that. I've seen kids, like, how old are you? He's like, I'm 20-some, I'm 19. I'm like, why are you so weird? <laughs> but, yeah, kids are starting to get, like, really intense about it. Too. I would say because I'm really older. So. For, me, you, at, for you? me, a 19, 20-year-old, because my brother is 20 years old, so it's like, Oh, it weirds me out. <laughs> right. What, what, what have you learned about men from doing this kind of work? How, how long have you been dancing? I actually, um, I could be considered still like not a very experienced stripper because I've been like for a year and three months. Okay. But in that year and three months, what have you learned about men? They're simple. <laughs> they are. They're simple. Women are cows. Women, women are what? We're cows. Cows? Chaos. Oh, chaos. 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 Chaotic. <laughs> See? Complicated. I don't think we're supposed to be together on the same place for too long. Hmm. You know? You know how Jewish people even walk on different sides of the street, woman and man? I mean, shit. It kind of makes sense. Sometimes men and women just are. There's times where we just got to be apart, you know? I've seen a lot of relationships like that. Yeah. Yeah. Our brains are not even the same. They have different shapes, scientifically. That right there doesn't make any sense. <laughs> We're so different. But there's something biologically that... But we're constantly trying to go back to each other, you know? Yeah, there's something biological that attracts us to each other, even though sometimes we fight or butt heads or whatever. There's no solution without a problem. Have you been in love before? I've been in love multiple times. With a man? Always with a man. <laughs> That's when I feel like loving a woman is more freely. It's more free? The times I've loved a man is like, like, I, I don't know, like, I want to possess him, like, ah, but lately I've been having, like, open relationship about it, and it's like whenever something crashed with my peace, I'd be like, okay, go. It's time for you to go. We deal with things because we want to deal with him. <laughs> you know? I think, I think the answer to romantic relationships is to find somebody that, like, when it works, it works, and you don't have to fight it. You don't have to butt heads constantly. You don't have to try to fit a square peg in a round hole. It'll just work because you guys see things the same way and, and you're still attracted to each other. And it flows. It's, it's like falling off a log. It's just easy. It's like taking a test that you you know every single answer to, and you just breeze through it because you guys have a lot in common, and you see things the same way, and you're attracted to each other, and it just it's magical when it works. But so many people I see fighting to make something that doesn't really want to work. They're trying to make it work. Yeah, love is not supposed to be hard. No, it should not be hard. It should be easy. Yeah. If it doesn't flow, let it go. I think, 
But it's complicated. People spend their whole lives trying to find it. Yeah, it's a big deal in everyone's lives. I think, <clears throat> I think what I've learned so far in like this industry has helped me with is once you understand yourself and you accept yourself and you truly love yourself for what you do and who you are, people is gonna love you regardless. Yeah, if you because you already did that step, you know, so they don't have nothing else and to love you how you are because you already accept yourself mm -hmm. if you love and accept yourself you're going to become much more attractive to other people yes and then you won't have to try to win anybody over you and there's no but but no because i'm open with myself you know mm -hmm. yeah i think that's the most like thing that makes guys crazy like lately like i don't give a shit i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do that <laughs> Okay, yes. <laughs> you know, like... Guys like headstrong women. Yeah, definitely. They don't like insecure-ass people. They don't like that. Because how are you going to have an insecure woman if it's going to make you feel insecure? She's going to put your fears on you, and then you're not going to feel capable of shit. So, of course, you need a strong woman. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. Do you have children? No. No kids? I feel like having kids, I'm a very spiritual person, right? I don't care about money. I care about money because it helps me survive and exist. But I just want to transcend my soul. So like that's like the whole purpose of life for me. So if I have kids, that's not going to be something possible. I feel like having kids is like, imagine separating your soul like and another being. In that way, you stay attached to this planet indefinitely until that person is gonna reproduce and put their soul on another kid in a big loop, infinite loop that's never gonna stop. It's my time to stop and get out of here. I'm done. No kids this time. <laughs> hmm. Does this work that you're doing, dancing in clubs, does it affect you emotionally? That's a good question. I don't think I have find out yet, but... I had a relationship when I started and the consequences of what was going on in that relationship gave me more emotional trauma than the actual club. <laughs> but the club f pushes me, like, to be better, to create a status, to be that bitch, you know? Like, I don't know. How, how do you... How it do makes you me better than it makes, than, than makes me worse, you know, like... How do you see your ideal self? Like, like, what would you like to see the, the best version of Jesse? I want to be a, I want to be an actress, a model, singer, and a dancer, but in all the professional ways possible. Like, I want to learn choreography. I want to learn or other types of, like, dance, like salsa, stuff like that, you know? And I think I'm just going to turn into a teacher at, at some point, you know? Nothing wrong with that. No. That's a noble. I think I just, yeah. It's a noble something. profession. I've noticed, like, this thing have brought me so many other jobs, like this one, like private parties. Like, I was going to say something, but I don't know if it's legal. <laughs> so gambling and stuff you know so there's so many places to accommodate yourself when you're here like things just come do you, do you find from anywhere and i've never been when i was on the system when they own my time and i had a schedule i never had those opportunities come out the surface but you're living in this kind of subculture 
yeah. that's somewhat illegal, even though dancing in a club is legal, but there's a lot of illegal activity. Yes, of course, of course. You know that. You know that, that some illegal things, even in the system, they steal their money legally. Do you so, find there's lots of opportunities to get into things that are maybe trouble or less than ideal for? I don't, I don't live with fear. You like risk? I love it. Yeah, I do and too. I don't see life without it. I think risk is almost mandatory to find happiness. Yeah, because if you don't take a risk, you're never going to be better. Life becomes very boring. Yeah, you got to jump. <laughs> Let's find out. Let's jump. Let's find out. You know? You'll know. you never feel better unless you jump and survive. And But then if you jump and hit concrete. You <laughs> it's done. You try it again. <laughs> you may not. That's the best thing. <laughs> Isn't it supposed to stop one day? <laughs> Do you get interesting offers and propositions from men in the club? <laughs> yes. Like what? I don't know. Like guys who want to take you home, the guys that want to. There's every day. Take you on their boat. That person that wants to take you home, but. I trust my selection. It's like an intuition. Your intuition's got to be sharp. Yeah. As a sex worker. I've lost like four coworkers in less than two years. Lost them how? They're dead. From, They're so dead. From drugs or from murder? Or? Murder, drugs. That's what can happen there when you don't have intuition or where, when you just don't follow it. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. There's lots of seedy stuff that goes on. I, I could die any day. I don't know. It could happen to anybody, you know? It's one of the risks. What's your biggest fear? <sighs> My dog's death. <laughs> I don't know what People else. love their dogs. I think one of my biggest fears would be like smash my face or lose my legs and still be alive. Hmm. <laughs> I think, thinking about it right now, you ask about it, yeah. And the men in the clubs, they're do you see men differently now after doing this for a year and a half, three months? A lot of these guys are married, right? I don't consider the men I meet at the club the same as the men I meet outside. Good for you. No, I know how to discern people. That's great. That's an important thing because men are not men. I don't generalize people. That's good. That's not okay. Yeah, that, that, that question is always Even coming. in a group of friends, I don't generalize them. I see each individual as they are, because we're all different. He can be cut with the same, you know. You have a good head on your shoulders. The, the one in the middle. <laughs> I know, <laughs> I'm joking. You're a smart girl. But, yeah. Men are, men are, men are cool. I'm not trying to like, I'm just not trying to waste no man time right now. Cause you know, I'm on the roller coaster. You're living your wild life right now. Yeah, I don't wanna, I don't want nobody to like be suffering through that. So are you I'm having good. fun? Yes. What, what, what are the upsides and downsides of this lifestyle that you've, that okay, you're living? Okay, so be up on a day. Like, I slept four hours to be here. Hmm. I think, like, three. That's rough. Yes, and I was like, damn, I got to go do this. But, you know, I'm always, like, doing things for my own growth, too, because I believe, like, I believe, I want to believe I'm going to become somebody one day. Mm -hmm. So you have all to, those you have to believe. Yeah, all those external activities that, like, are creative, like when I go to the studio and like 
meet people that is gonna make music and stuff. Like I go because they gotta connect with people. I gotta be there, even if it's not gonna bring me money all the time. When you're in like this type of like jobs, you gotta be moving everywhere and try to meet people. So, but yeah, I can't do administrative things. Like I can go, like all those things that you gotta do like nine to five, I just don't find a, a way to get in there. But yeah, if I like schedule myself, I can, when I have to go to the bank and everything. Are you saving money? I am saving money. I want to buy land probably in Mexico and just like end up there one day when I'm old in an island. Are drugs a part of your life? Yeah. It helps you go up on stage and take your clothes off and deal it with these guys? It helps me talk to guys. It hurts you? It helps me. It helps you? Talk to guys. Yeah, I'm sure. It's a hard job. Because every guy's personality is different, and you're standing there as a sex object. Because I'm, I'm not really like, how do I see it? I'm not a sweet person. So for me, it's like I got to like numb my feelings and my emotions to like go and talk to them without taking whatever they're going to say personal or feeling bad about. Because sometimes a guy will tell you something to make you feel like, oh, you don't got enough titties, I don't want you. Or, oh, your hair is short, you look like a boy. You know, like, sometimes they're just like rude for no reason. Yeah, but, but, but guys can be jerks too. Yeah, and they just love Just as it. women can, but for some guys, you're like the perfect beauty. And they like to step on me on purpose. Well, that's, that's. And I don't understand why. And then they get intimidated and then they act like assholes too. And I'm like, why do I even give that? I don't know, but they're scared. <laughs> but I ain't trying to scare. It's like yesterday. I was sitting in a bar. Cause I just started at the library in Anaheim. I don't know if you've been there. It's yeah, really nice. I recommend it. And I was just sitting in the bar. Like, just started my shift, right? Around 5.30 PM. This guy walks and I see, cause I'm like, you become really good at body language and everything, you know? So you're very like observant and shit. And then the bar is like full of girls and guys all the way over there, but on my side there's, there's a sit, you know? So he just goes all the way to the other side, to the edge of the bar and asks the lady for a drink. And then I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna stand up and I'm gonna leave because I already know you're scared of me. So I'm gonna leave to the corner and I sit down and I look at him from the other corner. Like, what is he about to do? And he went right where I was. I was like, I knew it. I knew it. I just left this spot and you went and sit where I was. Why you didn't came to sit there where and I was there? So I'm like, grab your balls, Jessica. You go, go back ahead. and talk to him and say, you stole my chair. Yeah, I went back and talked to him. I was like, I was just here waiting for you. And you couldn't grab some balls and sit with me. Why? What is wrong with me? He's like, no, you're so beautiful. You're OK. There's nothing wrong with you. I just felt a little bit intimidated. I didn't know if you wanted some, me to be around you. Sometimes guys like it when. I'm like, dude, I'm here for you. <laughs> We're not out there. I'm not on a bar. I'm in a strip club here for you to come look for me. Sometimes honesty is the best policy. It just no, works, it, for real. And we created best. such a good like friendship. And he had a lot of tattoos. They were really cool. And yeah, like it was it, it was a good customer. But sometimes you got to break the ice and be like, fuck it. What's up with you? You know? Do mm -hmm. you develop a thick skin working in? in lingerie in front of a, a room full of guys? I don't, I don't mind. I actually prefer to be naked. Yeah. I'm very free with my body that way. 
I don't know why. It might be a problem. You're confident? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> or maybe you just like to be, you just prefer to be naked. I mean, we should be all naked. <laughs> You're born that way. Yes. And then they start putting leaves and stuff. And it's, <laughs> and it's so frowned upon. It's you know, so, supposedly Adam had another wife before. Her name was Lilith, supposedly. Who had another wife? You know, from the garden of... Oh, Adam and Eve? Adam and Eve. He had another wife before, supposedly. But she tried to, like, get on top of him and had sex on top of him. I never, right? heard, I never heard that. Never heard of that? Mm -mm. You can't research it. And then she got kicked out of the garden. So she went to the underworld, right? And she went to have sex with the demons and everything. And then she came back as a serpent. Supposedly that's the story of the serpent, but it's just another theory, you know? Mm -hmm. Is it easier or more difficult to build self, to feel self-esteem when you're working in a strip club like this? It's easier. Easier? Because so many guys are like telling you you're beautiful and stuff like that? I'm very proud of my dance. I'm very proud of the way I move in my transitions. And when people like recognize that about me, it gives me a lot of, like, how do you say it? Self-esteem. Confidence. Confidence, yeah. Self-worth, self-esteem. Yeah, when people recognize my work and they like it, it, that helps me a lot more than being told that I'm beautiful, you know? Do you feel beautiful? I feel beautiful, but one day is gonna die. Is that, is that difficult for a woman to know that? It is really difficult because we have like an expiration date. Yeah, I don't think it's talked about enough. <laughs> no, I, I think, I think it's, a, it's a big thing for, for, for women. No, it is, it is what it is. There's a point where we just like be on the side. You guys are never there. Yeah, you guys have different problems yeah. or, or different challenges, but that's a big one for women. That's when I want to find a husband. <laughs> when I get old, because that's when people's gonna really love me for who I am. As a man, it's complicated, isn't it? It's complicated. Cause I'm not gonna love him either, not right now. <laughs> What do you look for in a guy? You want a guy who's going to provide for you and give you a better lifestyle? No, because then I'm going to get stressed out. So what do you want? You just want a guy who's nice to you and fun? Yeah, I just want a guy that's around whenever I need it to be around. <laughs> that's not okay, right? That's but a dog. That's <laughs> no, I mean, you can find something like that. <laughs> Is gonna, um, is gonna be ergonomic. Is gonna adapt to the user. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. Do you get propositions? Do you, do you have guys that want to go in the back room and do extra things and things like that? Yeah, but I have two jobs that are completely different. One is very strict about it, and the other one is like crazy. Very loose. Yeah. These are totally nude or topless only? The topless is very strict, and the fully nude is like Babylon. <laughs> it's wild in these clothes, isn't it? No, fully nude. You see fully nude, you already know what's going on in there. I don't know. I, I mean, shit, so far, that's what I've noticed. Like, damn. Well, that club in particular, because before, I've been in other clubs, and they're not that wild. Bear Elegance is like, very wild. I've. You need to sleep. Yeah, I don't know. I think. What cool things have happened to me? I've met people that are like. 
important. Like, I can talk about it. No, you don't want to name names. Huh? You don't want to name names. No. But, I've like, met, famous musician, famous... I've act- met important people, like, more about, like... Not more, not not like famous, but yeah, also famous, but people that do things like I don't know, drugs type of stuff, like lawyers, like <laughs> I know a lot of people that can help me for whatever, like working on those type of places helps you meet so many people that you're gonna need at a certain point, you know. <laughs> But do they all want some sort of favor? No, they they don't naturally. <laughs> they, they won't tell you. No, they might, but they 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 won't always get it. They won't they won't always get it. Men love when you don't. Men like when you don't give yourself to them that easy because that's when the game is done. We're it's, hunters. You know, everything is done once you have sex with them. Men like to hunt. They're never going to help you for nothing again. A girl who's a challenge. So you got to take them like, yeah, 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 yeah. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. And well, you'll be like, yeah, yeah, we're going to do it. You get all that stuff. So all your favors. and A woman who's a challenge gets 100% of our attention. Yeah. A woman who's easier becomes a little bit less interesting. Yeah, you don't remember Which is is totally fucked up, but it's the way it is. That's how their brain works. Yeah. It should be like that. There's a lot of things about the way men and women interact that's not quite right. You know, you'll see women with a, a very attractive woman with a wealthy man, and you just think that that's, she's only the, with him for one reason, which may or may not be the case, but she might not even be able to admit it, but she may somehow subconsciously be more attracted to him, maybe maybe even fall in love with him because he is of a higher status or or just has a better lifestyle. Or he just have a big dick. Could be that too. Most of the times. And then for men, we'll see a beautiful young lady and get and she's playing hard to get or she's just difficult to connect with. And that makes us Really, yeah. Get motivated, man. Motivation is everything. It's not just being pretty. If you know how to make a guy chase you, if I want to, yeah. You got him wrapped around your finger. <laughs> yeah, but that's a girl right there. <laughs> but then, but then those kind of girls. Do you really want the girls to get... love me, bro? They love I don't you? understand why. They love you? Yes. That's great. I'm like, yeah. People love me in general. Well, you're beautiful, but you're also not like threatening. You don't seem like you would be very catty. You know, you understand the word catty? No. Like, like sometimes very attractive women will be mean to each other because they see each other as a threat. You're very beautiful, but I bet you you probably would get along with other attractive women. Yeah, I'm always like, I always want to make my girls feel good, you know? Yeah, there's something about your personality that makes yeah, it easy. Yeah, like you're supposed to feel good. You're supposed to be nice to other women because they just go through the same thing than you, you know? Like, we're one. Well, if, you, if you're, if you see the big picture, you see that you guys are all on the same team but if you think small then you're gonna see every other female as a threat is like girls in a surf club that want to try to be mean to each other when you end up sucking the same dick you know how is that gonna make sense not saying that we all suck dick but it could be a possibility you know or even grabbing the same dick, whatever, dancing on the same dick, whatever. It's the same shit, you know? Like, you end up, like, on the same... And that that shows you that we don't just fuck on the same dick. We might do a lot of other things on the same way, you know? At the same time. So it's like we have to be empathetic with each other or there's not going to be understanding for our own selves. Yeah, it's a shame. Men tend to not be that way. Men tend to 
like uh, admire or look up to or respect other men that are doing better than they are. Whereas women will try to knock down a woman who is perhaps in competition for the guys they want or something like that. Mm. Men is ruled by ego a lot too. They might act like they fuck with somebody, but they're just being hypocrites, okay? So you guys be hanging out with each other even when you guys don't stand up each other, you know? Women, we don't do that. Or at least we do it after taking the shit out the way, you know? But it's like at the club, it's like we have like, it's like pick your side, you know? Are you with them bitches or are you with us? You know, like it's something like that. It's like you divide the girls in different groups and it's like they just like naturally belong to each group depending on their frequencies or by Lord is as a person, values as a person or stuff like that, you know? Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, I feel like men are more tend to fuck a friend girl, you know? A what girl? Like men are more tend to fuck a, uh, their friend girl, you know? If a man, if a man has a, a friend, they will fuck their wife and they don't care. It depends on depends on the guy. A woman is gonna explode and cry or something weird is gonna happen, you know? Guys can live with it. Guys can guys can live with cheat more than a woman. You know what you I mean? You think guys can handle cheating easier than women? I would I would disagree with that. You think so? Mm-hmm. I don't know too much yet then. Trust me on this one. Yes. We're such cheaters. <laughs> no, it's just probably guy, through gonna, your experience, maybe. Yeah, but your your head's gonna explode if if your girl's cheating on you. I mean, not not that not that women don't do the same, but I can tell you from a guy's perspective that that's. I just don't like to share the people I fuck with, but they're they're gonna end up fucking each other, so who cares? <laughs> but when it comes to like. When it comes to my boyfriend fucking other girls, I'm like, I don't care. You don't? I don't. And if he comes about my wife having something to do with other people, whatever it is, I don't care either. But if my boyfriend and my wife fuck with each other, oh, that's a problem. So you, you have a girlfriend? When you say your wife. This is not a good right here. You're an, inter you're an interesting girl. Why? I don't know. That's just controlling, huh? It is a little bit. But 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 why would they have to fuck with you? <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all a little controlling. No, no. That's the only part where I get jealous. Uh any other thing you all can fuck with. Anybody you want. Just not my babies with each other, okay? The the world the world is changing perhaps, but it's fucking changing horribly. I'm going to end up having a polyamorous, polyamor, whatever the Polyamorous? Heck. Is that what you want? Would you be happy with that? No, I don't want that. No, nor would I. But I'm, I'm ready to defragment my brain into development and evolution. <laughs> no, I think, I think, I don't know. I'm, I'm old school, but I, I would think there are still people out there are, that are, that will respect those boundaries? Yeah. I believe that, too. I'll go to my grave with that. Yeah, that's why That's why you got to stand up, stand up on and defend your shit, you know? Yeah. Be like, yes, this is what I want, and I want it, and this is who I am. That's why it was important to accept yourself, because once gonna, you do you, that, people respect you. And you're not going to bend. But then there are, there are other people who have these open... Minds, open relationships, and good for oh, them. Yeah. yeah, there's other people that try to be slick, but... I hope they're happy. But bye, they're gone. <laughs> Jesse, what would you say is the most important thing you've learned in your 26 years? I 
I feel like I feel like legit all your dreams can come true. And I feel like you have the whole power to create your reality however you want it to be. And if you have a vision in your head, it doesn't have other choice than to be out there to come through, you know? Once you see it inside of you, it's gonna be out there one day, so. That's why it was so important to imagine. Imagine. When we was kids, we used to imagine a lot. And then kind of we like kind of lost that, but well, I, I will save myself. But once you go back to like imagining, like that's what's gonna happen. And I feel like it, life is full of surprises every day. And I feel like it's actually the world is not that big as they say. I feel like it's way smaller and I feel like we all get to know each other on a certain point. And I don't know, I'm just impressed. Each day I'm just more impressed. And I love food. <laughs> <laughs> you love food? <laughs> I like a girl that likes to eat. Yes. Yeah. All right. Jesse, thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you, guys. You're charming. Thank you. Get some sleep. <laughs>